In the last video, we introduced the idea of chemical speciation, and we thought about how we can use the henderson hasselbalch equation as a predictor to give us the relationship of the concentration of weak acid, concentration of weak base, based on the pH, right? And just briefly, we saw that if we are plotting the concentration of these two species, so here we have the concentration of our weak acid and the concentration of our weak base. If we plot these two as a function of pH, what we observe is at the very beginning, we have 100% weak acid, but that concentration starts to drop off as the pH becomes more basic. And at the beginning of the titration, or the beginning under really acidic <clears throat> And under really acidic conditions, we have essentially none of the weak base, but as the pH starts to become more basic, we have an increase in the concentration of the base at the same rate the concentration of acid decreases. And it's this point right here where the concentration of the base equals the concentration of the acid. And according to the henderson hasselbalch equation, this is where the pH equals the pKa. So this simple relationship occurs when we only have two chemical species. So when we have a weak acid that can interconvert into a weak base. Okay, This is a situation known as a monoprotic acid. A monoprotic acid is what the name suggests. There is one proton that the acid has to donate, okay? So in this situation, we have basically H1A. So in this case, we have a single proton this acid has. So once it donates that proton and converts to the conjugate base, then there's no more chemistry that can happen, all right? But as it turns out, there are many examples of molecules known as polyprotic acids. And a polyprotic acid is, again, as the name suggests. We can represent it as HXA. So this is our generic acid formula, just like we see up here. But the big difference now is that we have this extra term X. And this is meant to suggest that this acid has multiple protons it's able to donate. Okay. Examples of this would be something like H2A. This is a diprotic acid. An example of a diprotic acid is sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid can donate two protons. Um, sulfuric acid can participate in two distinct acid dissociation reactions. So the first one, the weak acid reacts with water to generate hydronium, and this intermediate weak acid, HA minus. But what you'll notice is that the product of this reaction is still an acid. We still have an HA situation. So in the second reaction, HA can react with another water molecule to generate another equivalent of hydronium. So this is an example of a diprotic acid. Two distinct and subsequent acid dissociation reactions occur. Each of these have their own pKa value. Okay, If we had a triprotic acid, in this case we would have three distinct acid dissociation reactions, each of them with their own distinct pKa values. If we had a tetraprotic acid, we would have four acid dissociation reactions and four distinct pKa's. Okay, so hopefully you're getting the idea here. Okay? <clears throat> okay, so the other really important thing to note here is that we can pretty easily predict how many chemical species can exist if we know the type of acid. So for a monoprotic acid up here, right? So for a monoprotic acid, we had two distinct chemical species. We had the weak acid 
and the weak base. So for a monoprotic acid, we have two chemical species. For a diprotic acid, we have three distinct chemical species that can occur. We have the diprotic acid, the monoprotic acid that gets formed as a product of the first acid dissociation reaction, and we also have the fully deprotonated form of this molecule. So a diprotic acid has three chemical species. If we were to think about a triprotic acid, we would predict that it has four species. These four species would be H3A, it would be H2A with a negative charge, HA, and A minus. If we were to think about a tetraprotic acid, we would have five chemical species. We would have H4A, H3A, H2A, HA, and finally the fully deprotonated version A. Okay, and just note here that these charges are relative. So I'm saying that we're starting with a neutral acid. So each time we deprotonate that acid, we end up decreasing the charge by exactly one. Okay, but if, for example, we were to start with a pentaprotic acid, and let's say the pentaprotic acid has a charge of plus two, we would predict that we have six chemical species. We would have H5A with a plus two charge. We would have H4A, we lose one positive charge, so we now have a plus one. H3A, which is neutral. H2A, HA, and finally the fully deep protonated form would have a negative three charge. Okay, so the idea here is that you should be able to very easily predict how many chemical species exist if you have a certain polyprotic acid, okay? Um, if you have a diprotic acid, you have two distinct acid dissociation reactions. Each of these reactions have its own pKa. If you have a triprotic acid, you have three acid dissociation reactions. Each of them has its own pKa. H4A, four reactions, four pKa's. H5A, five reactions, five pKa's. Okay, so this is the general idea of polyprotic acids. We are not gonna take the time to think about how to calculate the pH of these things, but I do want to think about the speciation more deeply. So in the next video, we're gonna think about the chemical speciation of these things as a function of pH, and think about how the different pKa values impact those curves.